Hello all. In this session, we'll discuss topic three of unit four, which is spatial data mining. We'll discuss the following points. We'll discuss introduction, spatial data cube construction and spatial OLAP, spatial clustering method, spatial classification and spatial trend analysis. So first, introduction. So what is spatial database? Spatial spatial database stores a large amount of space related data such as maps, pre-processed remote sensing or medical imaging data and VLSI chip related data. So spatial database stores a large amount of space related information, space related data. For example, map. So if we construct if we consider a map in order to locate a particular location we require latitude and longitude in the same way if we consider a medical imaging data image consists of large number of pixels and each pixels are located at a particular location so this also has a space related data so spatial database have many features distinguishing them from relational database. Next OLAP. OLAP is online analytical processing is a category of data processing that enables users to interactively analyze and explore large amount of data from different perspectives. It is primarily used in business intelligence systems to support decision making. So using this OLAP, users can interact, analyze and explore large amount of data from different perspectives. Next is spatial data mining. So spatial data mining refers to extraction of knowledge and spatial relationship or other interesting patterns not explicitly stored in spatial database. Such, de uh, such mining demands an integration of data mining with spatial database technologies. So it has wide application in geographic information system, geomarketing, remote sensing, medical imaging, etc. So spatial data mining is used to analyze geographic information and spatial data. So it explores patterns and relationship in geographical spaces. One difference is geostatic. Geostatistic is associated with continuous geographic space. Spatial statistic is related to discrete space. So geo statistic is a continuous geographic space whereas spatial statistics relates to discrete space. Next, spatial data cube construction and OLAP and spatial OLAP. So can we construct a spatial data warehouse similar to data warehouse? Yes, as with re relational data, we can integrate spatial data to construct data warehouse that facilitates spatial data mining. So let us consider an example. Let us consider an example of spatial data cube and spatial OLAP. So for this, in this we will consider British Columbia. So British Columbia uh, is a westmost province of Canada situated in Pacific Northwest. Now there 3000 weather probes record daily temperature and precipitation sending data to weather stations. So weather probes are the instruments that record temperature and precipitation and around 3000 weather probes record daily temperature and precipitation. So the steps are step one 
integrate that is data integration step 2 multi dimensional model step 3 olap analysis step 1 data integration collects spatial and non spatial weather from british columbia probes integrate it into a centralized data warehouse next multi dimensional model use a star schema to analyze to organize use a star schema to organize dimensions like region time and weather variables next step 3 olap analysis build a olap cube and perform the operations like drill down roll up slice dice to uncover regional weather trends and patterns in this one next first one is data integration so data integration it collects spatial and non spatial weather data from bc probes there are three types of dimensions in spatial data cube first one is non spatial dimension second one is spatial to non spatial dimension and third one is spatial to spatial dimension a non spatial dimension contains only non spatial data such as temperature and precipitation which can be generalized into a non spatial category like hot and or wet these dimension do not involve geographic or spatial information so so non non uh, spatial means anything which relates to space and has some coordinates whereas here a non spatial dimension consists only non spatial data such as temperature and precipitation and that too we are giving the names like hot and hot or wet next spatial to non spatial dimension starts with a spatial data but generalizes to a non spatial category for example a city like Seattle may be generalized to a non space region like Pacific Northwest, wherein we give a string. So, to a place we are giving the name. So, Pacific Northwest. Next, spatial to spatial dimension. Cons it contains spatial data at both primitive and generalized level. For example, temperature regions like 0 to 5 degrees, 5 to 10 degrees remain spatial at all time so in the spatial to spatial dimension what we are doing is to a particular region we are giving a range of temperature and this comes under spatial to spatial dimension so in this one being a spatial region that is geographical area some particular area and the other being temperature range assigned to that spatial region next multi dimensional model a spatial data cube essentially organizes the data into multi dimensional structure but underlying it is collection of related tables much like the traditional database schemas such as star schema so in star schema dimension like so we are we will, so we are applying that star schema to this example so in star schema dimensions like region temperature time and precipitation are linked to measures such as region map area count numerical measures like area and count can be computed similarly to non spatial data cubes while the region map is a spatial measure containing pointers to the spatial object so this region maps consists of the spatial points so so this is the star schema of british columbia weather spatial data warehouse and the corresponding weather map probes so as we discussed in this dimensions like region temperature time precipitation so region temperature time 
precipitation are linked to measures such as region map next area next count and we have separate tables for each for example region dimension table we have province region name city district next time dimension table we have time day month season next in precipitation dimension table we have precipitation range precipitation range description in the same way temperature temperature range and we have its description and this is the map british columbia map wherein we have different probes used to measure different temperature so you can see here small boxes over here so for uh, example different roll ups on the british columbia weather map data may produce two different generalized region maps as shown in 10.4 each being the result of merging large number of probes region from figure 2 so you can see here in this many weather probes are there that is we have many small regions now these are generalized for example in this region they may be having same temperature or precipitation so it is almost combined so all these regions are combined into one so and also one more point is here instead of giving one temperature we give a range of temperature so as seen uh, in this star schema dimensions region temperature time and precipitation so we have four dimensions here so similar to a database here we have spatial data warehouse wherein we have this fact table this is known as fact table and from this table we have other connecting table which are in the form of a star connection next spatial data cube allows you to analyze data across both traditional dimension like time and spatial dimension like geographic location now spatial olp allows you to perform operations such as drill down roll up and slice on spatial data helps to gain insights from large and complex spatial data sets next so this is a olp cube this is a simple olp cube now image below highlights the multi dimensional nature of olp cube showing a list of products list of products that is game console drive digital camera lcd monitor purchased by a number of consumers these are the names and the cost uh, implication measures across the time so here you have time so this is an example of olap cube next integration of heterogeneous spatial data from multiple sources and formats is one of the challenge in constructing a spatial data warehouse the use of star schema for organizing spatial data helps to facilitate olap operations through spatial indexing and efficient query mechanisms are used to ensure fast and scalable performance next step 3 is olap analysis here we build olap cube and perform operations like drill down roll up slice and dice to uncover region weather trends and patterns in british columbia example next is spatial clustering so spatial data clustering identifies clusters or densely populated region according to some distance measurement in large multi dimensional data set some common spatial data clustering include k mean clustering 
db scan that is density based spatial clustering of application with noise and k mediates next spatial classification and spatial trend analysis spatial classification analyzes spatial objects to derive classification schemes in relevance to certain spatial spatial properties such as neighborhood of a district highway or river now spatial trend analysis deals with another issue the detection of changes and trends along spatial dimension typically trend analysis detects changes with time such as change of temporal pattern in time series data next spatial uh, spatial trend analysis replaces times time with space and studies the trend of non spatial or spatial data changing with space spatial trend analysis studies how non spatial or spatial data changes across space such as observing the economic situation moving across moving away from the city center or the climate and vegetation changes with increasing distance from the ocean such analysis so for such analysis regression and clustering analysis methods are often used by utilization of spatial data clusters and spatial access methods thank you